DXB. It's in the game. This game. Where do I begin with this game? I mean, what's Ben trying to do to me here? I think I'm being punished for making sure he's never getting a review copy of This Is The Police. I mean, that is the only reason I can think of that would justify him giving me Cluster Truck to review. I mean, let's get started. Look at this. Look at this. This is what greets you on screen when you run this game. This is the default game launcher in Unity. Now, some of you probably know, in my spare time, I make video games in Unity myself. And that means I know that this pop-up can be disabled with the single click of a mouse and is entirely unnecessary because all of your visual options can be contained within the product. And indeed they are here. So why is this box here? This pop-up is the calling card of like amateur homebrew dev. It is unprofessional. And now look at this game. I prototype. I prototype in Unity all the time. I know what the default first person controller acts like and I know what it looks like when you take the default game camera and just nail it to the top of it with no sophisticated lerps or anything clever. I know exactly what that looks like. It looks like this game. I also know what Unity's default physics engine looks like when you just bang all rigid body box colliders around. It looks like this. I could make an exact copy of this game in about a week. And you know what? If I did, I'd spend the next week fixing it so that it actually supported widescreen monitors. You know, those monitors that basically everyone in the world has now? That's what I'd do. And don't even get me started on the gameplay. This is a first person platform game, because they're always fun. And only all the platforms, they're moving platforms. And what's moving them is the default Unity physics engine. So they never do the same thing twice. You just die. It kills you a million times a second. And the reason it does that, of course, is so that when the Let's Players get their hands on it, they can all pull their funny faces and scream their silly little heads off. Oh, I've died again. Oh, it's so funny. If this was any more obviously streamer bait, you'd have PewDiePie's dog driving all the trucks. The other thing is, it plays a lot like Networm. Now, Networm is my game. You know, a proper game. And unlike Networm, this is going to be streamed by every pretty boy on the internet till the end of time. And it's going to sell a million copies, and the developers of this game are going to buy a gold-plated Ferrari, they're going to park on my front lawn, they're going to do donuts in my flower beds, and they're going to keep throwing fistfuls of their dirty money into my astonished, weeping face. Oh, this game makes me sick. And you know the worst thing about this game? The worst thing about Cluster Truck is that when you actually sit down to play it, it's really good fun. I mean, really fun actually. Like, it makes you laugh a lot. There's a respawn loop that's like one frame long, and so all those arbitrary deaths and all that stupid physics nonsense, like none of it really matters in the end. You can hurl yourself into the level and die ten times in, in the length of time it takes most games just to load in the character model. And like the wonky physics, they sort of, they end up encouraging you to keep retrying because you just never know, like maybe this time everything's going to just fall into place and the trucks are going to be kind to you and you're going to feel like a god as you just leap salmon-like across the tops of them all. But you won't feel like a god and you won't leap across the tops of them all. You're going to fall off the first truck like a drunken horse straight under the wheels and you're going to die. But then you're going to laugh and you'll try it again and you'll keep trying again and, and you won't really know why but you'll have spent three hours playing this daft little game and and you'll have unlocked the really cool power-ups and you'll have seen some of the nice ideas in the game and and you'll probably have reached like the later levels that get like genuinely interesting and and really silly and there's like giant hammers smashing the trucks all over the screen and and you've started to wonder if the game might be a little bit brilliant and, and all that amateurish sort of naffness that annoyed you at first sort of starts to feel weirdly charming. I don't know. I mean, there's far too much wrong with this game for me to seriously give it more than three stars. The joypad controls are horrific. They're borderline unusable. There's a whole list of visual options that are all just given to you as completely meaningless acronyms that only, like, graphics card fetishists will understand. And even better, like, if you just turn them all off, the game looks much nicer afterwards, so I don't know why any of them are there. And at the end of the day, like the game's just this total one-trick pony. You jump on trucks, and then you jump on some other trucks. And that's all you do. I'm not sure this game's worth £12, but then again, I kind of suck at this game. And I've looked at the trailers, and in the later levels, they're like properly insane with all like mad laser beams, and there's like a Tron thing happening. And So maybe, maybe it is worth the money.
Uh, they even bundled Totally Accurate Battle Simulator as a pre-order incentive, which is a similar bonkers, physics-y load of old nonsense. So why not? Like, as hard as I try, I just can't find it in my heart to really say much negative about this game, because it's sort of an unrene unreviewable product. You can watch two seconds of the footage, and, and you know if you want to play it. Look, look at the invisible cameraman jumping on all those trucks. Do you want to play that? Then you should probably buy it. So yeah, it's three stars, isn't it? B X B. It's in the game.